Hey, this is Mike with the One Stop Co-op Shop, and today we're looking at Space Core from GMT. Specifically, we'll be looking at the solo mode. This game can be played solo or with two to four players competitive, but we don't do that kind of thing here. Quick disclaimer that GMT did send me a review copy of this game. And as always with my playthroughs, I'm going to go through how to set up the game and some basics of play. But if you already know all that and just want to see the game in action, check out the timestamps in the info or in the pinned comment to skip ahead. Also, just a reminder, because I don't say it that often, we have an awesome Slack that you can join to have great conversations with other gamers. Uh, check out the link for that in our info. And also, if you like what you see here on the One Stop Co-op Shop or what you hear on our podcast and you'd like to get early access to videos like this, uh, check out the link to our Patreon. So Space Corps can be played in three eras of theoretical spacefaring. But for the solo game, the expectation is that you'll go through all three of them. So for setup, I'm just going to show you how to set up the Mariners, the first era, when you're just going through the inner solar system. But in the playthrough, you'll see the other eras and how to set them up. Mostly, it's the same kind of rules. So for the board itself, you're going to take the four teams and the other three player colors, so 12 teams in total, and put them down here. Those are going to form the teams for the competition that's fighting against you. And you'll take two teams in your chosen color and put them on your base there on Earth. Now you have two other teams, and this is one of the most asked questions I saw in BGG. You don't use those teams at all in Mariners. There's no way to get them into play. They just don't exist. That's the same thing for Era 2. The Planeteers are still only two teams in play. But finally, for Starfarers, the third era, you get a third team automatically, and you can get a fourth team through one of the technologies. Finally, for the board, you're going to shuffle and set up your E1 and E2 discovery tiles with the Mariner's little moon symbol there. And you can barely see it all the way up in the upper right-hand corner on the asteroid belt. You're going to put the first Beyond token. The only thing left is the offer of cards, but we'll get to that when we uh, shuffle our cards to start play. As for your actual player board, make sure you're using one of the ones that shows all three era symbols here. You're going to organize all of your bases on the indicated types and stack them like this. Now, technically, you don't use your secure shield factory and exploiter bases until the second era, but I think it's way easier to set them up at the beginning and just not use them. You're also going to place your brown and black adaptation and breakthrough cubes here where it says start. And that's it. Like I said, pretty simple. You'll also set up the business display. You're going to put these little orange tokens on the left spaces where it says contract fulfilled marker. And you're going to choose one color for the competition out of all of those uh, team cubes you had earlier and your own and put them on the zero space of the profit track. And speaking of the competition, shuffle all of their bases again in that one color in a baggie or an opaque container. I mean, I don't care if it's a baggie. I just don't look when I draw. Now, again, you're technically not supposed to have the secure shield factory and exploiter tokens in here. But if I just draw them, I draw again. It just saves on setup time. Finally, the only part that takes any appreciable amount of time is setting up the decks. For your deck you'll be using during the era, you want to look for the cards that have, again, the Mariner symbol. And some of them will be shaded. These are the 12 starter cards. And it's very simple. You're going to shuffle these non-starter cards. And then on top of them, you're going to shuffle and place the starter cards. But you are going to start in your hand with one card. Where the heck is it? There we go. One chemical drive card will start as your hand. And the other starter cards will go on top of the other deck. And remember that offer I mentioned earlier? You're going to take the top four cards of your deck, which will all be starter cards. And you'll place one in each spot. You can keep the deck near there. You'll have a discard pile as well. And again, I just have a chemical drive with a move one ability in my hand. As for the competition cards, it's a pretty similar process, and this will be consistent across the eras. You're going to go to the next deck, so in this case, the ones marked with the little uh, Saturn symbol for Planeteers. And a little different this time, you're going to randomly take six of the cards from the starter cards, and you're going to shuffle those into the bigger deck. And then the other six shuffled starter cards will go on top of the entire deck. So you have six uh, starter cards shuffled throughout and uh, six that you always are going to have on top. So you'll always start with some starter cards. Now, that would normally be it for setup, but this game does have cool ways to add variety in the era cards. So you haven't seen these yet, but there are these basically technology cards that you can get and six of them aren't used in solo mode. So in a really nice touch, they added era situations that you can randomly draw from for the game, one for each era. And generally speaking, they impose some kind of limit on what you can do, but also make the AI tend to get fewer points and uh, profit from certain actions they do. So if you're playing with these, and I'm going to, you draw one at random, and you pay attention to the effect for the current era. So here it is a glutted market. 
I can't do special actions. When I produce, I get one less profit. And the AI's actions are going to be impacted in a different way. Now, don't worry about all this. When I explain the game, I'll kind of show how this changes things a little bit. It's not too different from the basic play. But it is part of setup, so I just wanted to show it. So that's it for setup. Let's get into the basics of play. Now, before I get into how you actually conduct a turn, I think it might be helpful to show kind of what you do on the map. So the basic thrust of gameplay in Space Core is you have these teams. You'll use movement to take them to different sites. So, for example, you've got these Lagrange points. You've got uh, Luna, the moon, uh, different asteroids and comets you can land on. You can go on Mars, Mars's moons, or all the way out to the asteroid belt and Mariners. And once you're on a site like Luna here, you can do one of the other common actions, exploring, where you spend a certain number of explore points. Here you need one to take the indicated token type and flip it. Now here's one from the Planeteers. It'll often give you some uh, profit, which is what you're trying to do in the game. You're trying to get as much money as possible. Maybe some free research. It might have special icons like this one that shows there's alien life there that you can use to build certain kind of bases. And then once an explore token's there, you can build a base by spending build points equal to the B value of the site with any modifier from the discovery token. And there's a lot of types of bases you can build, although again, these three aren't available in the first era. But generally speaking, the discovery token will impact what you can build. Like if there's a water there, you can get an industrial base. Or if there's alien life, you can get a bio lab. Now, why do you care about getting bases? Well, first of all, the exploration tokens themselves can get you profit to win. But also you have these seven contracts that are active. And if you or the competition fulfills them, you get the indicated amount of profit. And just in the first area, you're just looking at these ones here. And you'll see a ton of them are based on bases. So having four Lagrange bases, having four non-Lagrange bases, having the first base on Mars. And then there are also some about uh, infrastructure in your company and advancing your research. On top of that, you have another basic action apart from move, build, and explore, which is producing. Uh, once you have certain bases built, you can just basically make profit by producing stuff on them. But how do you accomplish any of these actions? What resources do you use? Well, that's going to all come down to your player cards. So first of all, you've got existing infrastructure in your company. You start with just a single move one in infra slot one. And what that means is anytime I want to move, take that as my action for the turn, because you only take one action a turn. I'll get one free point for that to get me toward the moon or whatever. But you'll have cards in your hand and you can take a research action to draw more cards. This will let you draw two. And those cards can come from the top of the deck or from the offer and you can kind of mix and match freely. And when I take an action like move, I can discard as many cards as I want to boost the value. So if I wanted to have four move, which is enough to get to the moon, then I could discard these three move one cards plus my existing move one. That's consistent. Infra stays around. And I would have enough to move my uh, person to the moon to explore and make a base later. And exploration works the same way. Building works the same way. Producing kind of works the same way, except in that point, this is how many sites you can choose. So I can choose like two different bases to produce with. But another action you can take is upgrading your infrastructure. So you'll see, for example, my starting uh, chemical drive, I can upgrade as infra. So as my entire turn, my one action for the turn, I can put that in either an empty slot or replacing something else. And now I have two free move every single turn. And that's basically it for the actions in the Mariners era. You can research to get more cards, move to sites, explore those sites, and build on those sites, and then try to produce some profit on those sites. As for the rest of your turn, as you see here, you conduct your action. We already talked about that. You claim any contracts that you now apply for. So for example, if you have the first base on Mars, you skip uh, step three and step zero in Mariners. Then you get a free team transport. Basically, if you have a spaceport somewhere, you can bring a team from it or to it to another one of your bases. Uh, you replenish the card offer. And then if you have four or fewer cards in your hand, you draw one. So it's kind of a bonus if you keep Keep your hand below five cards. And that is pretty much it for the player. I'll add extra things as we get to new eras. And the nice thing is resolving the AI turn is even simpler. You simply flip over their top card and first they might do a site action, which will name one of the places. Now this is clearly not from this era. And generally speaking, all the things the AI does give you one card of warning. So as example, if they named Luna, I would put a cube there, but nothing else would happen. They'd just be kind of showing they were interested. But if I drew Luna again and I hadn't gone over there and built a base myself, Self, they would explore and build a base there. The second kind of action they'll sometimes do is a discovery and contract action. And that basically means they'll explore at sites where they already have a team. And they'll also start to claim the indicated contract. For example, if it said six, the first time they would just put a cube there has no other effect. But if they do it again before you claim that contract, they get the points. And the final one is an offers type action, which is going to discard cards from your available offer. 
This one, for example, says get rid of cards one, two, and four. And for each of them that have a move effect, the AI gets one profit. And a lot of them will actually have the icon of the era. That means it'll be based on whichever area you're in. And normally that would have things go one way, but because I'm playing with the optional era situations, it changes what the AI is going for, and I can actually plan ahead. So for example, if I leave explore cards in the offer, they'll get money for them. Whereas if I leave produce cards and special cards, the AI will actually lose profit for them. So it's kind of in my best interest to make sure those stay in the offer. All right, that was a broad overview, but I don't want to bore you too much. Let's get to the gameplay. And as we add things or get to new eras, I'll explain new things. The AI always takes the first turn. In this case, they are doing a site action. Now you'll see two are listed. If they already have a team at one of those, they'll prefer that one so they can build a base. But in this case, they're just going to take the first one, Solar Lagrange Point 2. And as I mentioned in the rules, if they don't have a team there, they put one there. So they're now in danger of taking that point, which isn't a great one for them to have, because that's my best stepping off point to get to Mars. And by the way, I didn't go into movement details too much, but the amount of movement you need is you need one to lift off from a place. You need to pay the cost of crossing each border. So that would be an extra one, another one, and one to land. And if a place has gravity, which is basically just Earth and Mars in this scenario, you need to pay that extra to lift off or land. So it would take three to lift off from Earth because of the plus two, and then a four to land at a lunar Lagrange point, for example. All right, but the AI is done. Let's get to our turn. All right, so I've got a pretty basic choice here. Do I want to upgrade my move one as my first action to get two free move? Or do I want to draw some cards equal to my research value, which is two? Because clearly I can't get anywhere without at least four movement. They even have a little guide over here to tell you that. The only thing that worries me at the moment is that three of the four cards in the offer are going to give the competition a free profit if they uh, get rid of them. Which makes me think maybe this turn I uh, get two cards from the offer and wait until next turn to do more. So I'll go ahead and get three and four. It doesn't much matter since they could grab any of them. And you can't do a research action if you already have more than seven cards, but clearly I'm fine here. Remember, at the end of my turn, if I have four cards or less, I draw an extra one, another move one upgrade. I refill the offer, so move one upgrade, another move one upgrade. And then finally, if I have four cards or fewer in my hand, I draw another one. Oh good, I got a little bit of build there. AI's up again, you see the game moves really quickly. Ah, oh, darn, they got a team on Luna already. So I would love to step in and stop that, but I need four movement. So this time I will go ahead and uh, build the move one into my infrastructure. And that might get me more because if I have three cards in all my infrastructure spot, that fulfills a contract to get me two profit. I'm just drawing a card since I have three. Okay, another move build. So I got a nice little mix of things there. Solar Lagrange Point 4. Man, they were going hard for these sites. Doesn't matter which color team I use, they're all identical. All right, now let's get to Luna. I need four to get there, uh, three to leave the Earth's atmosphere, and one to go down there. I've got two for free, so I need to use two cards for my hand. And I'll do one of each type, because I want the one explorer to actually explore Luna, and then the one build will get me halfway to the two I need to uh, build a base there. So I discard those cards beside the deck, and I didn't mention that when you go through all of your cards, or all of the AI's card, or six of the seven contracts are fulfilled, the era ends. So I'm going to pick up one of my teams, and they land on Luna, ready to explore. I have less than five cards, so another move or build. Oh, this is perfect. Now I have enough to explore and then build a base. Love it. Ah, and the AI is doing their first offer action. So they're getting rid of offers one and three using the Mariner's rules. And this works out well for me. Glad I got rid of those explore cards because neither of these has an explore icon, which would have gotten them plus one profit. But they also don't have producer special, so they don't lose any money. Now, something I didn't say, when the AI refills the offer, if they get edge cards, which are kind of these reaction cards in the competitive game, they get a special effect as indicated by their reference sheet. So good, none there, although there is an explore card. And none there as well, still churning through these starter cards. All right, let's keep going, try to steal Luna from them. I'm going to do an explore one, which is all I need because it says E1 there. So I discard that card. And to reveal the topmost token. Oh, interesting. Abundant ores. So it has nothing cool like water or life forms that would let me build a special base. It does have a profit value that lets me produce there, although it's zero and I'm minus one profit with the uh, era situation, the glutted market. But it does make a base cost minus two. So instead of costing two, a base on Luna will be free, but it will still cost my action. So I still have to wait until next turn. And I place my team right on the discovery token. That means I've claimed it. And all that really means is if the competition builds a base there on their next action, they'll have to compensate me and I'll gain two profit. Not from them, I should say. I just gain it uh, from like the bank. All right, I only have two cards. So let's draw. Hey, we got our first non-starter card, move two or build two. Clearly they are much more powerful. 
Uh, the A's doing another offer, two and four with the Mariners. And this time it works out better for them. They are going to gain one profit because of the explore subtype here. So they are first on the board. And let's see. Oh, produce card. That would make them lose money if they grabbed it. Although it's also got an explore and another explore. Gosh, there's so many explorers up there. But hey, I'm not going to worry about that. I want to finish when I started and build a base. Now they have a nice little cheat sheet to tell you what you need to build a base and what the effect is. But I honestly don't have as many options as you'd think. Because industrial doubles your build actions, but all the builds are so cheap here, I wouldn't need it anyway. Refinery makes a tile with a p-value one more, so I'd get one production. But again, from the glutted market, it'd be minus one. I'm just to show you what I'm talking about, whenever you produce, gain minus one profit. So I'd get zero from that. And I can only build a spaceport on a Lagrange point. So my only real option of any worth is a research base, which just lets me take a card from the offer. But considering that building this is free, thanks to the abundant ores, I don't really mind. My team stays there, but the competition team goes away the second that they have been beaten and can't do anything anymore. Now I can grab a free card. I'll grab this one since it would get the AI one point. And because I have four cards, I get a free draw. Ooh, an infra that'll give me one explorer, one build every turn. That's really nice. I'll probably build that next turn. And I refill the offer, build one just as an infra. All right, Lagrange point five. Man, they like these. And so there we go. I don't mind the side ones that much, but I might want to fight them for Lagrange point two. So the question is, do I move there now or do I do my little build point infrastructure first? And I know the obvious answer because if they build while my team is there, the only movement my team can do is to come back. I can't launch from somebody else's base unless I come back to one of my own bases. So I'd rather minimize my chance of getting stuck. So I'm just going to build the infrastructure. I'll get one explore and one build whenever I need them. Back down to four. So a free draw. Ooh, move two or explore one also is infra. That's my next play, I think. As for the AI, one discovery and contract one. Now, they're currently not on any sites that have a discovery. If they were still on the moon and I hadn't explored this, they could have. But they are free to place a cube on the person to take the first production action. And again, if they draw that again, they'll get it. By the way, if neither thing applied, so that was already taken and they had no discovery things, they would have redrawn a card. That's the general rule. If it gets them nothing, they redraw. All right, as for me, you know what I'm about. Boom, I've got three cards. My infrastructure is full. It's going to get me a contract in a second. Specifically this one, cards in three infra slots. I get two profit back in the lead. And because I went back down to four cards. Oh, another one. Hmm, I guess I could upgrade my other move one. But first, North Mars. No, I don't want them to get the first base on Mars. Hmm, let's see. Maybe I say forget it about the Lagrange point and just go straight to Mars. What would that take? If I launch from the moon without the uh, gravity... That would be one, crossing over two, crossing over again five, landing six, plus one gravity, seven, move. I think I can wrangle that together, right? I've got three already. Yeah, and then if I did like those four, or actually this one, because I want to keep the build. So yeah, if I use those three, that would be four move, and that would leave me with uh, not quite enough build to build a base there, but close. Actually, maybe that's foolhardy, because getting the Lagrange point first would be a really nice jumping off point. Because it'll be one, two, three to land there. Building it would be a cinch. With Lagrange points, you have to build spaceports on them, but that lets me teleport my guys there at the end of my turn. And when you start a move there, you get plus two moves, so I could get to Mars no problem. Yeah, but no, I don't want to lose the momentum, so three for my infrastructure, four more for my cards. I'm going all the way there. Although I am abandoning my team on Earth. Ugh. Well, so be it. We'll try to get him in the action later. Okay, I'm going to draw a card. Hopefully it's building. Oh, so produce, we already said, is pretty useless in this scenario. But edge cards I can use for a bonus, and so can the AI if they get redrawn after they discard cards from the offer. But they don't do the effect here. They have a chart for how it works in solo. In this case, it says salvage. Play at the start of your turn. Gain one profit. Take all start cards from the offer, which currently is two cards. That's pretty good. All right, the AI. Don't go to Mars. Ah, offers one, two, and four. Uh, that was one of the start cards I was about to get. Uh, they're getting plus two profit from that, but minus one from that. So one overall, which means it's tied again. And they're going to refill those three spots. Hopefully no edge. Nope. And that's good. Produce will hurt them. Nope. But I don't like the explore. And nope. All right. So I will go ahead and start my turn by using that edge ability. I get the only start card in the offer and it doesn't refill until the end of the turn. And I also get a profit up to three. And each side of Mars has a two explore cost. So I have it covered just in infra. So I don't have to use anything from my hand. So let's see what we find. Oh, nice. So we found water. That'll let me uh, build some cooler bases. We get one free profit from the find. So there is water on Mars. Who knew? And uh, you're going to pay one less for a base. It only costs five up there on North Mars. And I put my guy on it. Oh, and that is lovely because with my one build infrastructure and the four more in my hand, I can now build a base there. I was a little bit shy. Okay, so I got a special kind of card I didn't talk about. Research I can discard when I'm drawing cards to get more. That's easy enough. 
But for genetics and a card type you'll see later called Revelation, I move uh, the indicated cube around here. If it gets all the way to the top, it will give me a research, but not until I'm in the next era. But uh, moving it twice will get me a, a contract for some extra profit. I do have to refill the offer. Ah, more explore for them, darn. All right, not North Mars. So remember, they prefer when it's uh, two sites, the one that has a team already, and both of these have a team, so they'll use the left one. The team is removed back to their supply, and you draw a random base from their bag. Here I got a refinery. And you check what their guide says. Generally speaking, if you could have built that base type there, then they get a bonus for it. So if that had had a P number, it didn't, there's not even a discovery token there, then they would have gotten something extra. But hey, I'm very happy about this. I am stealing Mars from them. Their team goes away. That is gonna cost me, of course, my four build plus my one on infra. And because there's water there, I can build an industrial base. And this is a nice one for where I am. It's gonna double the build value of each build I do in this entire region, which is all the stuff uh, bordered by these little lines here. So if I build a base on South Mars, Phobos, or Deimos, it only costs three instead of five or six, excellent. And to touch on some contracts, I got the first base on Mars, three profit, awesome. And I have two non-Lagrange bases, so if I build two more, I'll get that. I do get another card draw. Oh, another edge. So I play this when the competition does an offer action and discards cards from my offer. I get to draw the top two from the discard pile so I can kind of uh, poach some nice stuff from what they throw away. Already competition. A Lunar Lagrange point four, that's different. And then I don't either one, so I'll take the first one that was listed. And if they get four Lagrange point bases, that's worth three profit for them. All right, as for me, might as well keep a good thing going. It costs uh, three movement to cross from North Mars to South Mars. I'm like Matt Damon over here. And I have all of that from Infra, it didn't cost me anything, and neither will the two explore in a moment. I have three cards, and uh, move three Infra, not bad. All right, AI, Deimos. Uh, so they've given Mars up, they're trying to steal the moons instead. And let's see, I'm not in a hurry for South Mars, I'd have to get two cards in a row. Should I go compete for Deimos? Or actually, I guess I might rather go for a Sisyphus or Halley's Comet, even though it's going to cost more to build there, because uh, one of the contracts says the base is in five regions. What would that cost? Uh, three to lift off from Earth, four, five, six. And I've got three for free, so that new card I just drew will get me right there. Woo! Uh, free draw, some more build, that will be helpful. Oh, good thing I didn't compete for Deimos, because I was not going to win that race. Now, Phobos is listed first, but there's no team there, so they're going to go for the one that already has a team and build a base. They'll remove the team, they'll immediately investigate the discovery, but all they care about is the profit one. And then they randomly get an industrial base. And this does match because industrial likes p-values. So the bonus is they get to place another team at a site that is empty in the same region. So they jump right to Phobos, yikes. All right, so I've got two places to explore. And by the way, I haven't mentioned this, but if I move to the asteroid belt, I can't use that team anymore. There's kind of like off exploring, but it does mean I get the first beyond token and I'll have an advantage uh, starting further out in the next era. All right, so free to explore. Ooh, this one is lovely. Two profit from exotic elements. Oh, but the base will cost one more. It does have one profit generation again, if I was gonna be uh, doing that in this uh, mission. So to show you the standings, I'm at nine and they are at three. And I'm still below five, get another card, which by the way, getting cards is not always positive. I am speeding up my deck running out, which tends to be one of the uh, quickest ways the eras end. North Mars. So I already have a base there, which means he just skips this and draws again. I wish it had been South Mars because I wouldn't mind him putting a team there before I build the base. Oh, here we go. Solar Lagrange point two or South Mars. Ah, but they do have a person there, so they're going to build a base at the Lagrange point. Another refinery, which will do nothing for them, but they are halfway to the contract of having four Lagrange points. All right, I want to get rid of some cards to draw more, so I'm going to play four build, which gives me five with my infrastructure. That's uh, more than I need, but I can't get away with just three since that had a plus one build. And what will I build on Mars? I think research makes the most sense, so I can get another card. I'll go ahead and grab this build. I don't mind having the build points for my uh, base on Sisyphus. And it's an explorer the competition can't get for profit. A refill, another produce and build. And I still get to draw a fifth card. Uh, explore and build, okay. Ah, darn. Offers one, two, and three. But look, they want produce action. So this is actually going to get them two profit because there are two of them there. So just to show you what I mean, one, two profit for the AI. And let's see if they get any edge cards. The deck is getting thin. Oh, they got hack. Edge cards drawn are immediately discarded, so they could keep getting them. In this case, it says I get rid of all research cards. Ah, oh, man. And I would also get rid of any in the offer, which would mean they would draw more, but there aren't any research cards in there. Okay, good. Oh, another edge, sabotage. Oh, and this one is terrible. I have to take one of my teams at a site without a base and put them on a place with a base. Well, let's see, I still want to build out to some of these spots, so I think Luna is actually going to be cheaper than Mars. Come on, no more. 
Good. This is a special action which I'm not allowed to use in the Glutted Market card. Now, before I miss the chance, I'm going to use my Poach Edge. I'm going to get the top two non-edge cards that were discarded, which is my genetics card back. Yay, and a uh, build I might need. All right, that was a rough one and the deck's getting low. Let's try to get to the Solar Lagrange point. That'll be one, two, three, which I can do for free. I can build their next turn and then maybe go to Haley's Comet. I'm not drawing a card because I didn't uh, use anything. North Mars or South Mars, redraw. Solar Lagrange point one. Thank God it's not the one I'm on. All right, these need build two. I only have build one. So I'll go ahead and get rid of this one. Their team scurries away. You can only build spaceports, but that's what I wanted because again, I can teleport a team to or from a spaceport at the end of my turn. And also I get plus two movement moving from there. I do draw a card this time. Oh, more movement. That'll help me get to the asteroid belt, maybe. Okay, offers two, three, and four, and they're looking for production. So this time they're not going to get anything. That means they are really accelerating this deck. Three cards. No edge, no edge, no edge. Yeah, ooh, genetics. I think I want to get that so I can uh, get that contract and also be close to upgrading next time. So yeah, let's go ahead and grab that. And I guess the move to build two might be useful. Now, of course, I'm not getting a free card at the end of my turn, but that's okay. All right, man, that uh, deck is almost gone. When the deck runs out, I immediately get another turn, uh, even if it was on the AI's turn or my turn without them getting a turn. Lunar Lagrange point four, they're building another one. And it's a spaceport, which is of course a match. Oh no, this has never happened, but they got the first beyond token. They're gonna get the jump start in the next era. Darn it. I didn't realize it was so quickly that they could get it. I should have moved uh, earlier, darn. All right, before I do anything else, I'm gonna do my double genetics action. That'll move me around twice, one away from my first adaptation card, next era. And I do get to profit. Let's see, I'm one base away from this one, they're one Lagrange base away from that one, and they're one region away from this, and so, and no, actually I only have, a, I need two more regions for that, darn. Deimos Phobos. All right, so they are exploring and then building a base on Phobos. Uh, one profit, and a spaceport this time will do them no good. All right, I still have three free movement, and actually, right, the spaceport actually gives me plus two, so I have uh, way more than I need to get to Haley's Comet. Oh, but they're not going to give me the time I need. They're getting rid of offers one, two, and three. You're looking for research. They won't find any, but wow, there's only one card left, and they got an edge, which means there's going to be no cards left, and this one lets them take another turn. Yikes. Okay, Luna, no. Lunar LP4. Nope, they're already there. Luna or Solar LP2. Nope, all taken. Solar four or five, yes. Haley's Comet, are you kidding? It just will not let me get away with it. Well, actually, and here's the bummer. There is nothing to get away with. My deck is empty, which means I get a free turn, and that's it. So looking at the contracts, it's too late to build a base because I didn't explore there. I could do a produce action for no gain just to get the uh, two profit. Or I could replace my move one infra with move three to set myself up better because all your infrastructure stays in the next era. But here's the thing, looking ahead, the tokens that are on the left are gonna stay there, which means the contracts here will gain more profit for them. So this is two progress cards, which are the exact cards I've set myself up to get one once I do a single extra action on that little wheel. So I'll probably get this money anyway, so I'm going to do the infrastructure. So I'm going to replace the move one with the move three. And when it's a card from the same era, it goes to your hand. Not that it matters here because I'm going to discard them all, but just to show you. So the first era is over. Let's look how we close it out. The competition will gain the profit value for their best base discovery tile token combo, which is uh, the exotic elements here for one. So let's get one profit, bring them to seven. I can also choose to keep one combo on my board, which would just give me a one profit option in this case. I guess it's worth it. And that goes right here on legacy production. Your infrastructure stays, your wheels stay, but everything else from the board gets reset. All the teams, all of the bases, they all go back. Now setting up the next board, you're gonna flip over the Mariner board. It's gonna have stuff that'll keep track of the potential breakthroughs for this era. And right now we only care about the ones on the left. Use them as a pair of cards, and you're gonna put the one that has a one profit reward on the top. And you'll see that because you're playing solo, a few of the spots are empty. Remember, that's where the cards that gave you the little era options come from. Now for cards for the new era, you're gonna take the exact same deck the AI just used. You're gonna find all the start cards, put them on top again, uh, shuffle everything separately, and draw the top two cards this time instead of starting with one automatically. In this case, I draw two infrastructure ones, one for explore two, certainly don't need that, and one for building. We'll get to this whole shielded thing in a second. And for the competition deck, literally the exact same thing I did before. I'm gonna take all the regular cards, shuffle them, uh, along with six of the random start cards, put the other six on top of the deck. And remember, you're leaving this board the same as it was, although you do take away any enemy teams that were waiting on contracts. 
And you're going to get an increased bonus for any contracts that were unfulfilled last era. Now we're getting into our new Planeteers board, Outer Solar System, here we come. And I like to lay it over so we don't have to look at the half of the board that isn't in use yet. All the competition teams go in their box. I still get only two teams on my shield factory in the inner solar system. And we have filled the offer again. And our glutted market is done. Let's see what comes up next. Yuck, brain drain. Do not draw a card at the end of your turn. Skip step six. Oh, that is deadly. Edges can't be played. Now, the good thing is VAI only gets minus profit from uh, the Planeteer-themed offer actions, but wow, that sucks. And this time we've got three different types of discoveries. We place them. And this time the first Beyond token is going all the way up to the Oort Cloud. But hey, remember how the AI got that? <laughs> that means they take three turns to start instead of one. Yikes. So let's jump right into our Doom. Okay, offers two and three using their new thing. Minus one for research, minus one for revelation. There is none of that. They just give me some more move infrastructure. Action two, they're jumping to Ganymede. It's moon of Jupiter. Action three, Europa. There we go. That was uh, not fun. Now, quick explanation. The core new mechanic in Planeteers is shielding and radiation. If you look here, you'll see that it says radiation comes outside of the asteroid belt once you get uh, to Jupiter and beyond. What that means is anytime you do a build action or a move action, and you don't include at least one card that says shielded, or have the action originating, or in a region with a shield factory, then you gotta pay for the families of the astronauts that suffer the radiation. You gotta lose two profit. So shielding is your friend. Now before I jump into playing my turn, let's look at the contracts that were unfulfilled and see a strategy. Do we already know getting two progress cards would be worth a bunch? Getting four asteroid bases would be worth a bunch, and they aren't competing on those at all yet, they just went to the moons. Uh, three regions beyond Jupiter. They aren't there yet either. Two bases beyond Uranus. They were looking at uh, Pluto and uh, Charon or Charon for that pretty much. Uh, three bases in one region. That's best with uh, Jupiter or Saturn, of course. Having infrastructure, three non-start planetary cards. It'll take a while for that. And four bases on sites with water or life. So I think starting with the asteroid bases where there's no radiation is a good way to start. And don't forget, I'm not getting any free draws at the end of my turn. So I've got five free move, and that's easily enough to get to any of these. So let's make my first action. I mean, they're all one explore. They're all basically equidistant. Let's go to a series, I guess. No card draw, so that's it. AI's doing offer one and four, again for nothing, because it is the Planeteers icon. Two move fours we can upgrade. Uh, there's still starter cards though. They won't get me closer to that contract. I don't care too much. All right, I can explore for free. So let's go ahead. Ooh, nice. And produce actions actually work now. So if I build a refinery there, I can get three uh, profit every time I produce. AI, two discoveries and a token on contract six. Oh, and they do have two discoveries. Wow, really good ones. E3s are powerful generally. It's gonna be two profit for them on Europa and one more on Ganymede, yikes. And they're also putting a team here, but since it was fulfilled last time, not too big of a deal. All right, before I start building stuff, let's go ahead and have this guy go to, I don't know, Vesta. And then I can put down this infrastructure to give me free building. That'll be enough to build on all these places, basically. Ooh, AI is going on series? That is awesome. Because all they're going to do is be able to watch while I build a base. Well, assuming that they don't pull another series card, because I'm going to get this infrastructure now. And I guess I'll get rid of the move to explore one instead of the move three one. Now that seems dumb. Let's do this. Now, if this was another Planeteers card, it would go into my hand, but it's not, so I just discard it back to the Mariner's deck. All right, don't you jinx me. Okay, so this is a new one. It's still an offers action, but additionally, they're going to get one of the adaptations in this case, which is what the A stands for from the uh, offer over there. The LB stands for low body mass. They're also going to get the one profit that was there. Now this one's not worth any profit. They're also doing offers one and four for special end edge cards, neither of which is there. And they're still just start cards because there aren't any edge cards in the initial offers. Okay, but hooray, uh, we have the three build we need for series before they can mess us up. And I'm definitely gonna build a refinery there because uh, that adds one to the P value. So now if I produce there, I'll get three profit, like I mentioned, and their team runs away. Down to one card though, man, this drawing card is killing me. Oh, Rhea, now they're going to the moons of Saturn. There they go. Let's go and explore Vesta, it's all still free. I'm gonna get one profit and a production. Maybe I can just like stay here and produce my way to victory. All right, Enceladus, so that's another moon of Saturn. Show you how happy they're getting with their moon bases. Right, we've got two base move, which I just realized is not enough. It is enough to get to Hygieia in the same region, but to get anywhere else, I'm gonna have to discard a move card, great. He offers two, three, and four, again, for no effect. Unless of course an edge comes out. No, 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 ooh, specials. 
We locate one of my teams, currently the inner solar system, to any site in the solar system. Like, I can just jump to Pluto. Place a discovery tile on an empty site, gain any immediate awards. I think I might need to get uh, some of those. Well, you know, let me get the uh, antimatter prototype. I'll do a research action. And then move for build two seems decent, just so I can uh, move when I need to. We're getting that out. Uh, ooh, a produce. I want to grab that. And when the AI is finally getting to the asteroid game, Pallas or Hygia. They don't have a team on either one, so we're going to go to the first one. I kind of wish they'd gone to Hygia. Actually, before they have the chance to get rid of it, I mean, produces is so good right now since they can get three profit from them. Draw from the next, uh, the top of the deck. Okay, another uh, build one. Oh, and an edge card. Now, I can't use it, but I'm glad that they didn't draw it either. Oh, they got another adaptation, radiation resistance. Now, it is a prerequisite of having another adaptation, which they have, so they can get it for the one profit. And it offers two and three for research. Going to get them nothing. Ooh, move six infra and uh, research. That's good for more card draw. Yeah, you know what? What the hey? Couldn't hurt since I need to draw cards. Might as well go up to seven. Build five or a special action. Oh, another produce. Okay, an umbriel or aerial. So Uranus is in the mix. They want to go to umbriel first. And let's see, this might be silly, but I might as well get all the cards I can. I've got seven, the max I can do for a research action. I'll discard this to get four research. And I'm just going to get this produce card and the rest I'll draw from the top of the deck. Got an edge I can't use, but build four. Ooh, the genetics to finish off the genetics I needed. And a move eight or explore three. Cool. And AI is doing Iepetus. Basically got Saturn cornered. Might be a bit of a risk, but I want to kind of compete a little bit. And I also want to push outwards. So let's go ahead and use my antimatter prototype to take uh, the person on Ceres straight to Umbriel. And I'll try to uh, build there before they can. He offers one, two, and three. Once again, no research revelation there. Genetics, I might want that. Research and another genetics. Ooh. I have way too many cards to research at the moment, though, so i got to wait to grab those. I've still got two exploration infrastructure, so I can explore at Umbriel for free. No, nice. A free genetics upgrade, so that'll give me my first upgrade and two profit. I love it. To show you how this works, since I moved my genetics marker in here, I get an adaptation card. It happens every time you go back to the start space. I can't get radiation resistant. I need another one. A sensory focus lets me redraw tokens. I find it less useful. So the question is, do I want to get move five before the last one is taken by the AI or a free build three? These are just permanent bonuses, but that would also gets me one profit and I'm about to build. So yeah, let's do that. And to show you the relative profits. Oh no, actually that's not where we are. I totally forgot the AI rushed to get two progress cards. They got the five I was going for. One, two, three, four, five. They are in the lead. But we'll try to steal a base from them in a second. Ceres or Palace? And they do already have a team on Palace. They're going to explore. Uh, no profit for them. I like that. I'm going to get a shield factory. They only get a bonus for that if there's water. So they got nothing from that base. I'm fine with that. Speaking of bases, I need seven build for Umbriel. And if I use the lesser value to make it shielded, I have five already. I just need two more. But I'll go ahead and overpay with this edge card. I don't have much else to do with it. What do I want to build? Well, it's hard to argue with a bio lab when I have uh, life forms there. It gets me a free click on genetics. And I already have another genetics card in my hand. If I can get one more from the offer, there's two there right now. I can uh, get another adaptation. Oh, the AI's doing offers two, three, and four. That's one of the genetics cards. But hey, actually for me, they did get a research card, so it's minus one profit. Oh, no poach. I have to discard half the cards in my hand. That's especially terrible with uh, the limitation I have right now. I have eight cards, so I gotta discard four. Not the genetics one. Not any of the produces. And between what's left, I think maybe the six move is my best option. All right, well, that was a bummer, but hey, at least I can uh, research again. So I'll grab this produce genetics card and whatever's on the top of the deck. Another produce, gotta start getting those going. And refilling, okay. Oh my gosh, how many places can they be on without building more bases? I gotta rush this to an ending. All right, speaking of rushing, I am gonna get uh, another genetics upgrade. So this always gives me radiation, but this gives me five free move. I like them both, but I think I want to start with the move one. All right, Oberon or Umbriel? Uh, very glad now I got Umbriel when I did. They'll be on Oberon. And I do still want to get that four asteroid base bonus. So let's uh, go ahead and explore on Hygia. Oh, special discovery, get an E2 instead. And uh, my base is free, but ooh, P1. I could uh, now get five <laughs> resources every time I produce if I do two production. Uh, and so latest. I'm pretty sure they're already on there. Oh, indeed they are. They're getting three profit from a natural wonder. And they got an industrial base. So they're going to get a free team at the only empty site. Wow. Wait, wait, am I really this dumb? <laughs> Did I never build a base on Vesta? Oh, my lord. All right, well, let's build our free refinery, and then I'll go back there next turn. What a dummy. Oh, two discoveries, and they're going to lock down contract six. And for discoveries, we always want the highest values here, which correspond with the highest E values. So title will be first. 
We actually didn't get any bonuses, that's cool. And of the ones they're on, looks like Dion is next. They do get two profit for that. And because they got another one of those, well, they're running away. Okay, and Mr. Stupid continues. <laughs> there we go. Oh, man. He offers one and two for production. They don't get anything from that. Oh, and there is a new produce. I'm going to grab that, I think. Okay, my strategy at this point is to get every production card I can. So that's one. And then, oh, move six. Oh, that's the one that would have given him an extra turn, so I don't mind that they can't get it. When the offer got refilled with another edge, they're going to be locked out of those, thankfully. Uh, Ganymede. Oh, they don't have a base there. They just have an expiration token. And it's an attraction, which does not match anything there, so they don't get anything extra good. Although they are close to some contracts. Go over here. Let's build another refinery for free. And we're almost to super production world. Ceres or Vesta. Nope, uh, they're both gone now. Darn, if I delayed one turn, I would have just had them waste in action. Triton. I think it's up in Neptune, yeah. Out they go. Okay, we'll move to our last asteroid. That's free with my uh, low body mass upgrade. Dion. Oh, they don't have a base there, so they're going to build one. And it's a secure base, which basically means if uh, I don't have as many secure bases as them, I lose a profit, which is what's going to happen here. Now let's check real quick. Uh, four asteroid bases I'm about to get. Three bases in regions beyond Jupiter. They're just in the Saturn region. Two bases beyond Uranus. If they get Triton, that'll be one. Three bases in one region, they're almost there with Saturn. And then four bases on sites containing water or life. They've currently only got one containing water. All right, fun continues. Ooh, okay, two profit immediately, I can take that. And for them, they're getting a breakthrough probe network, which will earn them two profit and offers three and four for research. Ah, crud, they did get one of these. Uh, market influence, they just get two profit. Right, there's another produce for me. Let's grab that before they can. And top of the deck. Oh, that is... Okay. If they don't get the thing, it lets me discard all my produce cards. But man, that should be a lot of jumping ahead in a second. Palace. They already have a space there. Another breakthrough, you jerks. Uh, two profit offers one and two for special actions and edge. Oh, they will actually get one profit from that. And ooh, I think if they discard that, they'd lose two profit. So I guess I might leave that for them. Ah, but actually, I think I might build a research base here. I can grab that for myself, because maybe I want to get some more cards. Ah, so I'm going to just produce a bunch for the next few turns. Uh, speaking of, they're doing offers one and three for production, but there aren't any. So let's run down my production. This one gets me three, this one gets me two, and this one gets me two. All the rest get me one or nothing. So a three production action is my perfect storm here. So let's do that once. That's a three total, which means I pick three sites. And yeah, you can see how far behind I was, but with a few, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven turns of that, I should be able to catch up. All right, Callisto. Well, there actually is a moon they're not on yet. And here's three more production for seven more profit. It actually ties me up with them, but that's about all I've got. Ah, Europa will be another base for them. I gotta imagine they're gonna get a contract from that. Oh, and of course they get a spaceport and they're getting the first beyond again, which means they're gonna get three free turns again. Oh, you know what, speaking of contracts, I did get my fourth asteroid base, didn't I? So it actually pushes me ahead to 35. With Europa, I don't think they got anything new. Yeah, it does have microbes there, but they still don't have four. Let's see, because of orbital patterns, like I'm thinking maybe I could try to move to Neptune, but it does cost extra. So see, to go from Umbriel to Neptune would be plus 12. So that'd be one, seven, eight, 20. I actually almost have enough, but let's uh, grab some bigger cards and one from the deck. I don't really mind running out the deck much either. Another production. Oh, two, I need that. Oh, Titan. Oh, there will be another base, and that's going to get them at least one contract. Refinery, luckily, is worth nothing. They did get three bases in one region. One, two, three. And they are one away from this one, which is worth five. Yuck. Okay, well, let's certainly grab that. And we'll draw from the top of the deck. Uh, not more production, darn. We're almost out. Okay, Vesta or Interamnia. Those are asteroids, they're all taken. Okay, they're getting the leftover energy efficient and offers two and four for production. Hey, that's fine, that's gonna speed up the end game. Okay, yeah, there's only two cards left, but I have eight cards in my hand, so I can't grab them. But you know what, I can grab seven more production. Thank you very much. All right, I just wanna rush through before they get those contracts. Triton, oh no, this is a bad one. All right, so pirates, uh, they ignore all the text because it doesn't have any actual bonus from uh, profit. And they get a shield factory, which does nothing. Now there's still one region shy of that. They only have one base beyond Uranus. And that does not have water. So wow, if I can just finish this up right now, they don't get anything else. Yes. 
So there's two cards left in the deck, and I don't have anything really uh, pressing I want to play, so I'm just going to grab them both, and that'll give me an immediate other turn skipping them because the deck ran out. Okay, genetics. Do I have two genetics? No, I don't. So I can either do an infra or advance my revelation or genetics up one. I'll go ahead and do revelation. They're supposed to be more powerful. And boom, that's the end of the era. So yeah, that was a weird one. Look at these contracts. I gotta try to get those next time. I'm actually ahead in profit. I did not think I would be. But thank God they didn't finish one more base. Now again, the AI is gonna gain their best profit. Looks like two. Push them a little closer. And then I can replace this if I want to. And yes, please, three profit is good for me. Now for setup, we're gonna flip our Planeteers board to go to other star systems. That means we're gonna reveal our new breakthroughs and adaptations. And at this time, I'm gonna get three teams. And if I get the Star Children adaptation, I can get four. So those other cubes are finally useful. Once again, for my deck, I'm gonna take all the starter cards, put them on the top of the deck the AI just used and draw two of them. I'll fill in the offer with them as well. And a new element for Star Fairs, I'm going to fill the uh, colonies. But only ones like this one that indicate they are for one player count. And for the AI deck, I'm gonna do the same thing as normal, so I'm gonna use the old Mariner cards this time. And again, take six random starter cards into the deck, six on top. But this time I'll also shuffle these time cards into the regular deck. They just kind of fill it out since it's a smaller deck overall. All right, that brain drain was just so nice last time. Let's see what we get this time. Random mutations. Gain one profit whenever your genetics marker advances a space. Adaptation cards confer no benefits other than their profit awards. And oh, well, that's, this is good. The AI loses a uh, profit for every single of uh, these cards they get. Well, I'm regretting my one breakthrough push last turn, but I guess I can ignore them from now on. By the way, remember that happy first beyond token they got again? That means now they'll start at not one Lumen 16, but two Alpha Centauri star systems. And they'll still get to take three turns. Ugh. Now let's quickly go over the new rules for Starfares. First, no more one move to lift off, one move to land. Instead, you have these huge move values, 20, 30, and you can't stop in these little empty places. Even when you get to a star system, you start on the leftmost box, and at the start of each of your turns, you move one in, and you can only take actions with that team to fly away or build bases or explore uh, once you're actually at the star. Uh, everything is irradiated now, so yay for that. And the final big new thing is that you can build colonies. Now there's a bunch of rules for how you get colony points in a star system where you already have a base. And then more points lets you get more of these little diamond symbols which give you cooler powers. And then having colonies at the end gets you uh, extra profit as well. But hey, we'll see all that fun after we have them take their three turns. So 61 Cygni, Lacale or Lasale 9352, and Wolf 1061. Now the contracts are telling me a pretty clear story here. Look at this. Bases in four non-adjacent regions, that'll be worth Eight. Bases in six regions total, that'll be worth nine. Bases in three multi-star regions, ones where you see more than one sun, that'll be worth seven. So I guess I want to get some bases. But man, oh man, is my infrastructure some trash. I still have two Mariner cards in there. So I think the first thing I'm going to do is grab this from the offer. Uh, it's move five or move three shielded. I can put that in infrastructure. And do note that a lot of cards now have times movement. You do all the addition first, then all the multiplication. Get my second card from the top. Okay, this basic thing. Maybe another move one goes to the offer. And the AI is still star hungry, Groombridge 34. Oh, you know, I forgot because I didn't do it at all last era. I should have drawn a card. Ooh, move times three, yes. So before I do anything else, let's go ahead and replace that one with a better infrastructure. It's from an old era, so it goes away. And I'll draw another card, such a beautiful thing. Okay, all offers looking for production. There aren't any. Oh, man, there's a move five there. Wait, but let's see. They can jump to Alpha Centauri pretty easily. So I've got 12 move, or if I do it shielded, I've got 10. Which means even a move times two would be enough, but I guess a move times three will do it. Let's get them started on their Alpha Centauri mission. And research and revelation. I guess I'll be using that for the research. Epsilon Eridani, wow. They seem to know I want to go to a lot of bases. Uh, that ticks in one. I think I should get another one going there at Lumen. So with my 10 shielded, times three will be enough. Let's get this guy ticking in there. And I draw build five, that'll be useful. All right, uh, okay, breakthrough, jump drive. Oh, but this is good. They actually don't have the prerequisite, uh, entangled transmitter, so they can't get it. So they just discard the whole offer, looking for their special, which remember is all negatives. Oh, this is beautiful. Three shielded, they only get minus three profit from their offer action. Let's see if they get any edges to compensate, of course. I have to throw away a card from a previous era. Luckily, it's my old Mariner's card. 
Ooh, two genetics. That'd be worth two profit. I should probably grab that. And times three move. Consistent. Wow. And so bloop, bloop. And I'm going to need four explore to explore here and eight to build. And so darn, I want a lot of these. That's right. I had a research card. So let me draw four. Let me get the move multiplier infra, the genetics. Wait a second. This is a move multiplier infra and a build. I like that better. Uh, the explore card. And I guess one thing from the top. Okay, hey, there we go again. Oh, nice. I love when the edges come out for me instead of them. Ooh, produce two. I know I still have a uh, three production waiting. Oh, crud, Alpha Centauri. So how much an AI does when they have a team there already depends on the explore cost of the place. For a four like Alpha Centauri, and this is terrible, they're going to explore, build a base, and build a colony all at once. For an Explore 7, the first time they just explore, the second time they build a base and a colony. For an Explore 10, they got to do three actions to do it all. They're going to get... An anomaly for two profit. You get a shield factory, which gets them nothing. And now this tells me what kind of colony they build. I look for the same number, which is good because this is only worth three profit for them. It's what the uh, diamonds mean for them. And just so the games didn't kick you too hard, my team does get to go back to Seoul automatically. I don't have to like just sit on Alpha Centauri waiting to move back. All right, well, I still have another chance there. I'm going to play this infra to my newly vacated one. I know, this could be bad. So they're first going to look for the highest even site where they already have a team. If they don't find that, they'll just look for the highest even site to place a team. And that'll be Epsilon Aridani. They've got a 14. Because it's an E10, they're just going to explore this time. Next time, they'll just place bases. And by the way, when you explore now, you do it for every space, and you place a base for every place when you build. And they got an alien token, so they redraw. And it's like the best one for them. They get three profit. And for their two secondary, three more profit. Wow. Well, they have passed me again. But at least I'm here now. So while I have the chance, let's go to an explore there. Ooh, fun. I get one profit. I get one genetics. That's awesome. Uh, one production. One colony will help me build colonies there, but a base would cost plus four. So it'd be a 12 instead of eight. My genetics marker advance. That's one more profit. Just to show you, we are neck and neck at the moment. Tau Seti. It's another new one. I hate that they're like all in these different places because nothing seems safe. I'm actually going to do two more genetics and gain an adaptation because I love this one. Look, when you build a base on a primary tile like that one there, you place two different bases and gain the bonuses from each of them, and I'll get a profit for it. That's actually three profits, since I also advanced genetics twice. Although now I took a chance of them building there first, but no, I'm fine. Okay, they want to get star children. They need two breakthroughs. They've got them, and they're only one shy of a contract. Then they're doing all offers again. This time I've only got minus one from one shielded uh, move. Who produced two or genetics two. I like that a lot. Right, well, let's not try my luck anymore. I want to build here. It's plus four for a base, so that'd be 12. If I want to make it shielded, I've got four, five, eight. That's something I didn't talk about for both era two and three. If you're short for move, build, or explore, you can spend one profit. So I'll discard this card to get to 11 and spend one profit to get to the 12. Oops, you know, I forgot. They did get the first colony. That's worth three by itself, so we're actually tied. It's because of hybrids, I can build two bases there. I can build an industrial because it has a p-value, and that will give me plus one colony point to build a better colony there. And I think I'll build a bio lab since there's life there. That'll give me another genetics, which also gets me another profit. Hey, I'm drawing a card again. Move four, okay. Now they're going to the highest odd site this time. So that's Tau Ceti all the way up there. It's a seven, so they're just going to put exploration, but next time they'll build a base and a colony. Let's see, two T for them. Ooh, if I got over there, though, that'd be... Plus two colony points. Wow. Speaking of, I think I do want to get over there and try to steal that. Because this one is way too expensive. Look, it's plus six, plus four, plus four. That's 14. That'd be 22 to build a base there. Here, it's only 10. That's 60 to move that far. Let's see. If I use the shield, I've got eight. I've got 16, which means I would need times four. Which I've uh, got. Let's do it. He's going to have a lot of time to build there, so hopefully I'll beat him. We got one of the new time cards, but we ignore it. It's still just this stuff. And hopefully it's one they're not on yet. I move up. And I can build a colony here as an action, but clearly there's no hurry yet. And I want non-adjacent systems. Epsilon Indy would be great, but man, it's hard to build there. If I use both of these, I would get there. And they're not even there yet. Maybe I should go to the one they just landed on instead. That's so cheap to build on. It's so much easier. Yeah, so let's do that. It's only 50. Although, unfortunately, I still need both of these to get there. So is it worth it? Yeah, let's try it. And I draw a card. I'm going to have to get some more Explore. Oh, Groombridge, they're already there. Actually, no, they're not. Good. All right, I'm advancing. One away. So here I'll need build six. Oh, no, sorry, ten. If I have shielding, I already have eight, so I'll easily be able to handle it. So I could grab some nice cards like that one, and I'll need more Explore for the Lakeo card. I'm going to draw a free card anyway. Maybe I'll build my colony. 
So colony points. If you have another colony within 20, which clearly I don't, you get one. If you have industrial, you get one. I got it. If you have any on the tiles, I do. So that's two. If I have at least two bases in the region, I do luckily because of my upgrades. So that's three. If I take this team away forever, that's four. I don't think I want to do that yet. If I can get eight build from cards, including my infrastructure, or 12 if it's a multi-star system, it is. That's another one. And I've got that pretty easily, so I'll do that. And if I have this Enviro Tolerance card, I get one. Oh, if I got the genetics, I could just upgrade to this. Well, you know what? Now with that in mind, I am going to go ahead and research. Ha ha ha. I'm going to discard all offers looking for research. Fine with me. I'll market influence the gain two again. They're at 50. Okay, I'm out to Tau City. Almost there. I think I really do need this as infrastructure because it just feels silly to be uh, spending so much over and over. Get rid of my cruddy old uh, one from the last era. Captain Star, that's a new one. They're basically everywhere at this point, which means they're definitely going to get some stuff if they start uh, playing the right cards. Okay, I'm at both spots. Oh, wait, silly me, I didn't have to explore here. He's already here. So let's go ahead and build there. Now, I do have to give him two profit because he is claiming the discoveries. But I can build two on the primary card and one on that one. I need an industrial for the colony bonus, a refinery to make that three production. I think I'll actually get a research there and grab this uh, production card. So I've got two colonies ready to build, and they should be pretty good ones. Uh, lemon 16. Hey, everybody. Sorry for the jump. Uh, my camera actually ran out, and I didn't realize it for about, uh, like, four minutes of play. So I took a few turns, and so did the AI. But what I was saying is, in Star Fairies, they changed the rules so that if you draw a card that is dead, uh, like Lumen 16, you actually don't redraw, just for a placement of sights. So run through what the AI did. They uh, tried to get Jump Drive again and couldn't. They uh, got some points from offers. Uh, they tried to get in Tau Seti and couldn't, which was beautiful. They did all the offers again, but I don't think lost anything. They placed a team on Epsilon Indy, that really good one I was interested in. They explored La Kale 8760, and they explored Groombridge 1618. And this was the one they just drew before my turn. Uh, they did get Entangled Transmitter, so they got a two profit from that. They also completed a contract, so they got even more. So yeah, they jumped pretty decently ahead from that. As for me, I'm about to get to a new star system that'll let me get a big contract. While I wait, I could grab the genetics card that would let me get Enviro Tolerance, get more colony points, and I can just kind of go crazy with that and get a ton of them. So yeah, I think that's what I'll do. I'll grab that and just some random card off the top. Oh, another one of the exact kind. Well, oh, they're going to finish Captain Star, I think. Oh, nope, it's another E7. So we'll just draw the two tokens for now, a two profit. But I'm finally over there. It's going to do our genetics first. Might as well do both and get the two profit from them. And another profit from Enviro Tolerance. All right, AI, Wolf 1061. Once again, wow, they're just not building their bases and connies yet. That's one, uh, two profit. When they do, it is going to hit me hard. I need to kind of speed things up here. All right, so let's see. How much production do I really need? I guess I can see what's there first. But if I produce, then I can get cards back in my hand. So it looks like one, two, three is my best. So let's go ahead and do that. And I have three back from my previous error. Three here, so that's six. And three more here, that's nine. Wow. And I'll draw a card. Oh, good, an edge they didn't get. Always love that. Oh, man, especially right before they discard everything. Okay, hybrids. Uh, I already got the one that was worth a bonus, so that's good. And then all offers, but there's no special actions or edges, so no bonus from that. And I actually don't mind them fast-forwarding through my deck, because I don't want them to build all these colonies. Ooh, more production. Yeah, but I think I have to get both of those for my next action. That is nine more profit for me. Oh my gosh, even more production? Wow. Oop, Epsilon Eridani. Since that's a 10, they're just going to build bases this time in the colony next time. We had attraction. Since there's an alien base, that's worth one profit. Industrial, that's not going to be worth anything. And research would give them one if I was ahead of them, but I'm not. So not too bad a set of bases there. It might seem silly, but I definitely have to get this and I guess the top card. Oh my gosh, another edge I stole from them? Fabulous. Oh crud, they're still turning through the cards too. I gotta build my colony. I'm gonna take the last entangled transmitter. Oof, they are losing one, two, three profit. Wow, yeah, we are, okay. Okay. Oh no, and they got an edge? Oh, sabotage, I gotta move a team not at a base. Ah, huh, crud. I guess I don't have time to get that contract anymore. I right, so have a ton of production, but colonies are more important first because they also get you points at the end. So first I'm going to try to get this colony. I just need four points for it. Let's see which of these are worst. So this one's three to start. This one is four to start. And this one's only two to start. So let's go for that one. So I'll remove my team. I'm not planning to do much else with them. That gets it to three. And if I discard like any build, I guess it has to be that one. That'll get it up to four. So I build that there. 
and that's gonna give me one every time I build a colony, so that just gives me one now. Uh oh, are you serious? All right, well, they're getting rid of one shield that's minus one for them. Are you kidding me? Is this really the end of the game? And, oh my gosh, I discarded all the produce cards from my hand. Well, so it goes. All right, well, there goes all that profit. So I just have time to build one more colony, I guess so that was my best one, right? But yeah, I think this one's gonna be worth the most for me. This lets me get an unfulfilled contract. Remember, there's an eight bonus one uh, sitting back there. Oh, no, actually, there's a nine, wow. So I need five points. I got two from colonies, uh, three from having at least two bases, four from having industrial, five. I mean, I could easily get more than that. So I'll build this there. And that is immediately the end of the era. Uh, no special stuff this time. We just get any end of era bonuses. Remember, I can claim any one contract. So I'll get this 9.1. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Then for having two colonies, I get a bonus of four. And they say a strong victory is being ahead by at least 11, and I did it. But man, you can see how close things were since he was accelerating his own end game. If he had started getting colonies in some of these places, like each of those would have given him four to six profit probably. But there you go, that is Space Core. All three eras, I can't believe we got through it. Check out my review, see what I think of just the solo mode of the game. I'm not touching on competitive. And again, if you liked what you saw, subscribe, consider supporting us on Patreon, join our Slack. We also have a Discord channel now. Good gaming, and I'll see you at the next stop.